I'm Gabe Margolis. I'm a PhD student uh, at the Improbable AI Lab at MIT. Um, and my research is mostly focused on the application of reinforcement learning to leg robots. We can consider two different ways of training uh, a robot to walk. Um, so in one scenario, uh, you might sort of fully describe uh, you know, exactly how the robot should move its legs in order to move forward. Uh, and that's how people specified walking for a long time. But recently, these learning-based approaches have become really popular. Uh, you sort of put the robot into a simulator and just let it try out random things. Uh, and then you define some reward function that uh, allows the robot to distinguish between did those random things I tried work well or did they not like, work well. So r rather than specifying, okay, here's exactly how the robot should walk, you can instead specify the criteria for good walking is the robot makes progress forward um, and then let the robot figure out how to walk. Uh, so the challenge with that is you can swing um, almost to an extreme where I guess locomotion is sort of under specified. Uh, and what that means is that if I'm just telling the robot you need to you know, progress forward at one meter per second, there could be a lot of different ways to do that. They might be all equally good uh, given just a reward function that says move forward. So you might end up with a robot that's doing something really weird, like, you know, walking on three legs. The real world has a lot of either differences from the simulator um, or just diversity uh, that actually requires you to walk in different ways in different places. The perspective that we took in this project is we don't know what we're gonna see in the real world. So the best way to allow a robot to, to tackle diverse terrains is to give it diverse walking styles. So rather than just saying, okay, make forward progress and don't fall, uh, we add in additional parameters that the user can specify uh, during deployment. So it can be uh, lift your legs higher, it can be crouch, have a wider stance, step faster. Um, now all of these behaviors are captured in a single uh, sort of neural network policy. Um, and that lets you adapt to new environments that you didn't see at deployment time. Through this, uh, a human can use the remote control uh, to select which behavior. Uh, but in the future, like some sort of uh, high-level planner or script decision-making policy, uh, it could choose different behaviors for different tasks. Um, so now I'm going to demonstrate sort of some of the different behaviors that the robot can do. Um, so this is a pretty typical locomotion behavior. Uh, the robot's trotting in place. Uh, you can see that it can turn from side to side and it can move around at different velocities. Uh, but there are also some other novelties in this controller. So the robot can duck low or it can go high. It can modulate the pace that it's stepping at. So it can step faster, step slower, and you can see how its motions can be combined with forward walking, with crouching. It also has a number of different contact patterns that it can actuate. Uh, so those include hopping, again, at different frequencies, different body heights, turning around while hopping, uh, it can also achieve this bounding gait where it's two front feet and two rear feet synchronize and pacing. So the right and left let feet make contact at the same time. Uh, there are even more behaviors that can be composed together. So uh, there's, two, there's not enough buttons on the controller for this, but if I switch modes, uh, now I can adjust the stance width. So here's a very narrow stance versus a very wide stance. And the wide stance is really good because it makes the robot really naturally stable. So if I give it some big shoves, it'll recover easily. Whereas if it adopts the narrow stance, this is also a totally fine way to get around. But in response to perturbation, it'll drift a lot more. I'm not going to push it all the way over, but you can see. Rather than focusing on the application of legged robots specifically, uh, what I'm excited about in my research is uh, more broadly what robots that make contact 
with their environment in diverse ways can accomplish. Uh, so that includes not just leg robots, but also um, like mobile manipulators, so uh, robotic arms and hands that can touch and interact with the world. Mm -hmm.